Welcome to In the News for December the 30th, 2022. I am Brett Birdie from appsandlaw.com. And this is Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all, all the holidays. All of the stuff. good, all of the good yeah. holidays. This is the like next to last day of 2022, Jeff, and You're we get to record. Eve, oh my goodness, wow, saying goodbye to 2022. What a year it has been. But uh, <laughs> we can't end the year without a huge story that just broke this past week about passwords one of our favorite topics that we talk about quite a bit and i'm yeah. glad that you covered it quite a, a very very excellently in your post today jeff yeah there is so much to say about this one um oh, let me begin goodness. by saying that i mean you say breaking news what's frustrating about it is we first yes. heard around yes. a little after august um of this year 2022 we right. heard about an issue with LastPass and some hackers doing what they you know would hope they not do but we didn't learn a lot more about it until later i want to say it was in november and then in december we learned that the whole thing was much worse than we had ever thought and that it was much. just like december 22nd that it came Oof. up even more this story has gotten worse and worse so let, let's let's tell people what's going on here please password managers um, to work well, you need to have a place to store your passwords. And although you theoretically can store them locally, to have a really useful password manager, you want to have your passwords somewhere in the cloud so that you can access them, access your passwords from your computer, from your iPhone, right. from your iPads, et cetera, right? right. So the question right. is, you're going to put it in the cloud, which is, of course exposes the, the, the idea of a bad guy you could get to the cloud and see them too. And so what these password managers do is they encrypt all of your passwords that are in the cloud. Um, right. Which of course is very important, but then there's always and then and then they do other things to protect themselves from the bad guys ever even accessing those encrypted files. But every password manager needs to keep in mind: well, what happens if all of our front door security fails? Mm -hmm. What happens what if, if the bad guy gets in the front door and actually gets to that encrypted bundle of passwords? Could they do anything with it? And how you handle that encryption? Is, is the key here. And what LastPass had been doing is, first of all, people got in their front door, which should have never happened in the first place. But then right. once they got there, the, the hackers were able to download the encrypted files. And the files were really just encrypted with whatever your master password is. And although mm -hmm. LastPass says that it would take, you know, theoretically millions of years to unencrypt it if you didn't know the password, that's not really true. I mean, one of the things that I, that the, the post that I had today pointed out one of their competitors, one password pointed out that a lot of people have a master password that you use to get access to all your other passwords. Right. That's something easy for them to remember, you know, like, you know, dog eats bones 46 or something like, you know, you want to have something that you can remember. Right. And because it's going to be composed probably of words like dogs eat bones, that if, if a bad guy is trying to crack in, the first thing yeah. they're going to do is they're going right. to take like the Webster's Dictionary words, you know, uh -huh. words, and then run those things in multiple combinations first. And so even though in theory it could take forever for the bad guys to crack it, the reality is that the first thing that they're going to do is run the words that are most likely being used to protect right. your encrypted files. And so right. – one password came out this week and said, based upon what we just learned on the 22nd, we think that it would cost about $100 in security hacking tools and time wow. to start cracking. And what's scary is that these passwords on LastPass have been, uh, they've been in the wild since August. So the bad guys have had months and months and months to access yeah. these passwords because you know they're somewhere on the internet and the dark web, mm -hmm. and then Absolutely. to just run all their tools on them. And um, you got to think that, you know, if we had known back in August, if LastPass had disclosed way back when how secure yeah, it was, right, any right. LastPass user would have known, uh oh, you know, we got a problem here. And so if you have been using LastPass, um, you really need to do some, th you need to change some things right now. First of all, you need to change all of your passwords. Second of all, if you have, you know, definitely turn on two factor security if you don't have two factor authentication if you don't already have it turned on, because that way, even if the bad guys had your password, you know, they would still need your auth authentication. Um, right. But really, you need to be changing your password manager because this is not the first time that LastPass has had a problem. And, but this is absolutely the worst. Um, let me say one more thing, and then and I'll switch yeah. it back to you, Brett. One password is the big competitor, LastPass, and it's the one that I've recommended for years, and, and I know that you Same. do as well. Same um, here. One of the things that one password has always done right is because they have they have prepared for the possibility that even though the bad yeah. guys have never made it through their front doors 
as has happened at LastPass multiple times, one password has always known that in theory it could happen. And yep. they have said, so let's just say that my password is whatever I said, dog, dog eat bones 46. When right. they encrypt your passwords, they don't just encrypt it with the dog eat bones 46. They also add to it an additional I don't even know how many characters it is, 24 random characters. Right. And they're random characters that are not part of your password. You don't have to, you don't have to type that every time you unlock your password manager, but it's a part of it's secure, it's 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 stored locally on like your iPhone, for example, and it's part of uncracking it. So that the what they've basically done is they have ensured that every master password, whether you set it that way or not, has a huge number of random characters associated with it. That way. Even if the bad guys were able to get into one password and could download the files and could work with them for the last five months of trying to break in there, the the security required to encrypt it would just be so high that as a practical matter, it would be impossible to get the passwords. Certainly, you would know about it long, long, long before that you could do something to protect yourself, which was not the case, case with LastPass. So yeah. um, this is a real sore eye for LastPass. Um, anyway, that's the big story. I'll, I'll, I'll let yeah. you address it because I know you've been looking oh, at Oh, well, no, you just keep talking because it's such an important, important, critical component. I mean, first of all, <laughs> we, you and I have talked about uh, the, l l let's look to the future quickly. Mm. Pass keys, they're coming, right? Sure. In fact, one right, password right. has already been working on it. And it's like the day of the password, I think, is quickly coming I to an end. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I know. From from the idea of things like this that could possibly be continuing to happen. I, it, you know, and what I loved about this post from one password, and this is by the, the chief security architecture uh, executive mm -hmm. <laughs> president at one Ooh, password. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He has written an excellent, excellent article. Which I definitely will make sure that we link in the in the show notes because it's just good to read through it. I think they did an excellent job of being balanced, of explaining exactly what happened, and they do a good job of not like you know uh, uh, taking advantage of the situation to attack mm. something like LastPass. But the chief security guru at One Password is going through and explaining exactly how they know that there inevitably is going to be something that's going to happen. In fact, how does he say it down here is that um, uh, it, it's not, it's not, it's, it's about, here it is. We have not been breached. One password says, and we do not plan to be breached, but we understand that we have to have a plan for being breached. Exactly. So this is what one password is saying in here. And I just, I really have always enjoyed their approach to this. It's like, we got to be balanced, but we're going to explain exactly what's going on. And as you did a great job of explaining, one password came up with the quote secret key, which is a, a, a technology that I think that uh, Jeff Goldberg from One Password introduced in like 2015. It was at like mm -hmm. at a conference that he was talking about, and I know all this because he puts all of this in there. And he even says, "I love this. It's not a good uh, design." <laughs> he says he even says in here the the consequence is that we're 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 using a secret key, but it is it is not the best approach. From from an aspect of like a user interface is right. what I mean, right? right? It's not the most convenient approach, but it does make the most sense from a security standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I think above all, that's um, I, I just really really like that. In fact, I looked it up, Jeff. You mentioned in your post you've been using One Password for over a decade. Mm -hmm. I looked it up. The first time I purchased One Password was in two thousand eight. Wow. <laughs> that's what I did. It. I don't know if you can go. But what is that? Thirteen, fourteen years now. Mm -hmm. So they have been around. You and I have watched this company continue to change and stay on top of this. I've always been surprised that somebody hasn't acquired them like Apple for crying out loud, just because they have worked so well, even with uh, Mac. And by the way, one password used to be Mac only than the iPhone and the iPad. But now because they went to the cloud, that it is available even on my windows like i use it everywhere it's where i mm -hmm. store all kinds of information you and i have talked about this quite a bit but yeah. i did set up that secret key and i made sure that i'm putting that in a very safe spot you and i have talked about that making sure that mm -hmm. our spouses and our loved ones have access to that information because it is the only way that you will be able to get access to this information and it is not going to be stored somewhere where i know that it could be compromised in some form or fashion yeah um I, as I pointed out in the post, I just want to emphasize this, that I, I'm, I'm concerned at the number of people who are going to see the headlines, yes. hear yes. about password managers having problem, and they'll assume, well, hey, if it happened to LastPass, it happened to someone else. And I, I'm not saying this theoretically. I have people that I know, very smart attorneys, who have told me, you know, you talk about the need for a password manager, but uh -huh. if I'm going to... 
if I'm going to trust someone else with my passwords, how do you know they're not just going to get hacked and everything else? Right. And this is exactly right. the issue that one password is addressing in this blog post where they go through it, that even Correct. if they were hacked and hopefully they won't be, they've got these extra protections built in. But right. what, whatever the system, you know, this protection that one pass to, password is using is infinitely better than any system you have yourself. I mean, I, I, I hear different people say, oh, well, you know, I, I've got my system and, you know, I know that for, you know, I only use some passwords for some websites and others for others. Look, to, to have security in this day and age, you've got to have completely different yeah. passwords yes. for every service you use. Correct. Those exactly. passwords need to be complex. They should not be composed of words like dog or fluffy or kitten. They've got to be randomly computer generated so Completely. that a bad guy couldn't couldn't guess it. And right. there's no way that a human being can remember that type of password with random numbers and <laughs> right. letters. So you need right. to store it somewhere. And rather than having it on a sticky note or saved in a Microsoft Word <laughs> file that's you know right. two levels deep in your computer, so how would a hacker ever right. find it? Of course, they find it anyway. Um, yep. you, you know, a password manager is the natural place to do it. And there's all these advantages too. When you have a password manager, not only does it store your passwords, but you can throw other information in there. We've talked in the past about you can use it for secure notes. You can keep your social right. security number, your passport information, et cetera. It's a nice central place to store all sorts of nice stuff. Um, and as an advantage, because the password managers like 1Password are built into, as you said, you know, Brett, Windows yep. and Mac and everything else, it actually right. makes it easier. When I go to log into a website, I just do, you know, little one little keystroke. And as long as I had logged into one password within the past, you know, however, I think it's last couple hours or whatever, um, it automatically enters my username and my password. So it logs me in quicker than I could have done. Yes. If I was typing things myself. So there, but, but I also realized that there is a learning curve. You know, every time you create a password, you got to use one password to do it and put it in. Right. And, you know, right. there's always like, you know, could your grandmother figure it out? You know, maybe not unless you have a really smart <laughs> grandmother. Um, but, you know, right. anyone that cares enough about technology to be listening to this podcast, to be reading my website or your website, right. you know, right. you're, you're the type of person that, um, first of all, probably has tons of logins and stuff like that. And, um, and you can appreciate this. And, you know, you just need to be using a password manager. And over the years, it used to be yeah. there was a large number of them. And then there was just a few that people recommended. Now, right. you know, services like what is CNET, Wirecutter, yeah. me, yeah. you, yeah. one password is, I mean, it's sort of a shame that there really is only one that people are recommending. There's this free one called Bitwarden that some people use, but I would Correct. not recommend a right. free product for something as important as passwords. Right. You want to have people standing behind your product that are being paid for their work to continually make it better and stuff. So I would, I would never recommend yeah. um, a free password manager. So, you know, um, it, one password yeah, is one it, of the it. In a, in a, in a quick kind of a sub argument from that, from like, you know, Generally, people would say, well, why should I even use a password manager? It's just going to get hacked anyway. I even hear a little bit more of a specific argument, Jeff, that sometimes people will tell me, I'm not going to use a password manager that's stored in the cloud, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to you know, manage my passwords locally so that nobody has access to it. And I see where they're coming from. And I believe I may be mistaken, but I believe that Bitwarden still does allow you to keep like a local file that you would have to physically sync, maybe on a thumb mm -hmm. drive or some other way. I don't know how you would do it. But to me, whatever way you're doing it, it is not going to be more secure than storing it in the cloud if as long as you are taking the proper precautions and using one password correctly on this. Yeah. I used to recommend people to say, you got to have a password manager. Full stop. Here are the two most popular recommendations, 1Password or LastPass. Unfortunately, I know there's a lot of people at LastPass that are working very hard to recover from this incident, but I would not recommend LastPass right now. And in fact, like you mentioned, I just saw that CNET, they even just put a, a note on here on December 23rd, <laughs> in the wake of security breaches in our second half of, second of 2022, we have removed LastPass from our list of recommended passwords. And the only two that they are recommending now is Bitwarden and 1Password. And that's where I would stay today. Um, you know, one password you, you mentioned in your post, very nice, transparent wise, has been a sponsor of iPhone JD. They sponsor many, many other podcasts that you and I listen to. And, but we were, we were customers, paying customers <laughs> long before any of those sponsorships. And I think this, yeah. this uh, article you linked to from Ben Lovejoy at 9 to 5 Mac even said the same thing. He's like, I'm not, I'm not just being in, you know, in one password's corner <laughs> fighting for them. He goes, I've been a paying customer all this time. I will continue to be a paying customer of one password. But, but as I keep saying, 
you and I, Jeff, have taken the proper precautions to learn how to use 1Password correctly, including setting up that secret key. We both have the family uh, subscriptions so that we can set up others on there as well. This is how I share information with my wife and my even my kids yeah. today mm -hmm. with sharing passwords on that information. And to me, yes, it is in the cloud. There's that extra little security component with that secret key because I have to keep that separately as well. But again, as long as you've taken time to make sure you're using this correctly, it doesn't take a lot of time. But again, as you said, this is so important and so critical that you must have something set up for this. And I keep telling people, they think, well, I don't need a password manager. I have a very, very, very good, you know, very long, strong password. And I say, good, but you use that same password on multiple sites, just like you said earlier, Jeff. And that to me, I always tell people, a password manager is not for creating a very strong password, although it does <laughs> that. But what I tell people is, it's because inevitably, one of the sites that you're using the same password at is going to be breached at some point and you need to go and you need to make that change. And a password manager allows you to do that quickly and effortlessly and being able to create and generate a, a password on there. It's just like you and I say many times, we don't even know what the passwords are for the vast majority of our websites. And I say that and people are like, oh my goodness, how can you live like that? Well, that's the reality of the world that we live in today and using a password manager. Woo, a lot of stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we've heard the end of this, unfortunately, which is yeah. really, really sad, but it's this is the world though. that we live in. How about something a little happier? Indeed. Maybe <laughs> you were looking for an iPhone 14 Pro under the tree. You didn't get it, but it may still be coming. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so a lot. We, we, we've had a lot of stories about whether or not things are going to come from China, what's going to happen, but you linked to a Wall Street Journal article today that gives you a little bit of hope. Yeah. So, you know, back orders are starting to be filled. There's going to be more soon. Um, thank goodness. I mean, they went through, China has been going through a lot of problems with COVID, which has been affecting all sorts of production, not just iPhones, right. but right. iPhones were definitely affected. And so it was great to see that the Wall Street Journal and other sources as well are reporting that the uh, supply is starting to catch up with the demand. So if you were hoping to get an iPhone 14 for the holidays, uh, hopefully you can get one very, very soon. Once you do get it, Another article you linked to today in 9 to 5 Mac was the top iPhone 14 Pro features to check out and customize. I think I hit about all of these as I went through, mm -hmm. Jeff, because we talked about the iPhone 14 for a while. But this is a really neat about uh, the, the cameras, using the cameras, uh, really neat about, uh, you know, the battery life and using the workouts and the, and the uh, live activities, all this kind of good stuff in here. There's a lot about the iPhone 14 Pro, which is different from any previous iPhone. You know, no previous iPhone has had that always on display. And so yeah. you're going to want to manage it differently than you've ever done before. No previous iPhone has had the dynamic island. I love the dynamic island. At the top. Me too. You know, we're going to continue to talk about apps doing that. In fact, one that I'm going to be writing a review soon. But when I was traveling over the holidays, I was using an app called Flighty, which is oh, a nice yes. flight. And yeah, um, very good. The, the Flighty app works just incredibly well with both the always on lock screen and the dynamic island at the top. So this is a good article that, you know, there are just things that they're, they're minor yeah. things, but they're noticeable things that make the I 14, iPhone 14 Pro different from any prior iPhone that you've used. So check out these things and decide how you want to customize and take advantage of those features. I think flighty works as long as you're not flying uh, Southwest, maybe, oh, oh, my maybe goodness, too soon. Okay. Well, once you do get that iPhone 14 Pro, here's another little gadget that I think you and I maybe touched upon briefly uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago or so, the MagSafe mount for using your camera as a webcam with your computer, which is really neat. John Voorhees yeah, always using, does a good job. Using your iPhone camera. So yeah, there were two articles this week, one from John Voorhees and one from Jason Snell at Six Colors. Yeah. Both of them have the final production units from Belkin. Um, it's just a simple little device that sits on top of your display <laughs> one. and it allows you one. to put your iPhone up there so that you can use the much, much, much better camera of the iPhone instead of the, you know, crappy camera of a webcam yeah. that's built into yeah. your computer or that you have sitting on top of your computer. And I can't wait to start using it. Um, I ordered one of these as soon as they became available on the Apple website. But um, even the purchase that I made before Christmas, I think is not scheduled to be delivered to me until the very end of January. So they're still making them. They're not on Amazon yet, but I'm sure they will be yeah. soon. So I can't wait to try one myself. And I'm sure you and I will be talking about it on this podcast once I have it in action, but it's, and, uh, it's great. Yeah. And Jason said this can work with an iPhone 12, 13, or 14. So Good. it can work with – this really looks really cool. And yeah. by the way, 
Good job, Jason and Dan, on on your logo for six colors. I didn't know that they changed it to the Christmas colors on there. You know, I did That's... not even notice that. <laughs> first and a little snowflake on the on the eye. Yeah, and just real quick, going back to John Vory's uh, article, he did he did like three little um, short articles here. One was on the mount, and the second little uh i just gotta throw this in because i love this little app called hand mirror i don't know if i've talked about it before i was on the podcast with david sparks on mac power users uh several months ago and i mentioned this and i remember david was like oh that's fantastic it's a little simple app that runs in your menu bar on a mac this isn't for the iphone or the ipad but it simply just puts on a little picture so you can see what you look like before you jump on a Zoom call, I used to use this when it first came out, and I was a big fan of the developer. He is just so tongue-in-cheek in, in the, the, a lot of things that he does. But I went ahead and paid. I mean, now you can get pro versions. It's $4.99 right now. It's not going to be that cheap, but you can do an option to pay $10.99, which I did just because this app is so useful. <laughs> it sits in my Mac menu bar, and I use it all the time. I love it. That's great. Cool app. Speaking of using your uh, phone <laughs> as a camera, there's another little neat thing that I forgot completely as well until you linked to the story by Dan Morin at Six Colors about using the Apple Watch camera control. Very cool. It's a great feature. And this is something that I only use a few times a year. Like right? maybe if, you know, every once, usually once a year, my family and I will get together at the beach and, you know, we'll try to get that one group picture that everybody's in. <laughs> oh, and so I'll set geez. up my iPhone, you're like on a counter or do something to sort of prop it up to capture everybody. But then when you're in the picture, like, do you, you could put the timer on and then run, run, run and get in the picture and right. then go back and do it again. But what's much right. nicer is to use the camera remote app on the Apple Watch. And that way, when you're standing there along with your friends and family, you can look down at your watch. You can see yeah. a preview of the picture, even though it's tiny on your Apple Watch. That's big enough that you can say, OK, everybody needs to move left or, you know, right or, you know, John, you're not quite in the picture. Move your head this way. And then right. once the picture is lined up, you can just tap on your Apple Watch and it will take the picture. And so um, but again, it's not a feature that I use very often. And I and I doubt right. others will as well. So you, you sort of forget about it. But keep in mind, you know, as you're getting together with friends for New Year's this year, for example, of course, you can always do the selfie where you hold out the camera and try to get everybody in there. But if you want to use the um, the better quality camera on the back of the iPhone, and maybe prop it up somewhere and get everyone in right. the picture. The right. remote camera remote app on the Apple Watch is fantastically useful. I can remember one time that I've used this, Jeff, and it was several, at least three years ago with an older version of the iPhone, an older version of the Apple Watch. And while it looked cool, I, there, was, there was one thing that, that it, it couldn't do. Do I can't like it couldn't do like a wide shot or couldn't do something specific. In other words, it was a little bit limited. Yeah. But now that I saw this, I popped it open and I'm like, wow, that is way so much better than it used to be. Yeah. And if I remember, I think I know what you're talking about. And you need to set up which camera, like if if you yes. have to set up the zoom on, you know, whatever zoom level you want your camera, you got to right, set that right. up first. And I don't think you can change that remotely on the watch, which frankly they should change. But um, right. we used it like on the, on the Christmas card that I sent out this year, which we which was, <laughs> which was lovely. Oh, okay. yes. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, you know, we had two pictures of our kids <laughs> in the front, but in the very back, we had a picture of of my entire family. And since right. I was in the picture, you know, I had to use the and that was that was the last time that I used it was when we took that picture a few weeks ago. So. Oh, very cool. Nice little bonus tip on that. Let's <laughs> talk about air tags now. You had a story about which I I couldn't understand quite exactly what he was talking about the air tag or the so he's talking about here. Find My yeah. in general. Okay, good. Yeah. So what this is, what Zach Hall was discussing is, I love Apple's Find My feature. Whether you're looking for your iPhone. Of course. Or whether you're looking for an air tag, and, and as I mentioned, I was flying this week, and I we had to check luggage, and I didn't expect to do so. I expected to have it as a carry on, so you're always a little nervous of are they going to lose my luggage? And it was great. As soon as my plane landed in New Orleans, I I opened up the Find My app, yes. and for my luggage, the air tag that's attached to my luggage, and you know, within a couple of minutes, I guess some somebody went underneath the plane and had an iPhone in their pocket, and it was close enough that it was like, oh yep, my 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 bag's right here in New Orleans. Ooh, so it was great. nice. Um, but as you know from Find My. Find My will warn you if it thinks that you left something somewhere, oh, which yes, is great right, because you right. don't want to be, you know, somebody else's office for a meeting and then you left your iPhone or you left your iPad or you left your bag that has an air tag attached to it. It's nice right. to get that warning so that you don't go all the way back to your office and then have to go back and get it again. Um, but sometimes it can be a little too aggressive. You know, it can 
I, I have had many times where I leave something in my car because I know I've left it on my car because I'm not right. carrying my bag with me. It's in my car while I go take care of something. And then it's like, oh, you know, I haven't <laughs> seen your, 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 your iPad is, is not with you. Like, of course it's not with me. It's in my car. And what Zach pointed out is that there should be a way, and this is such a clever idea. I, I, and unfortunately, this is just an idea being tossed up to Apple. Hopefully right. somebody's reading it, that there, there ought to be a way <laughs> that you can designate a car just like you can currently designate your home or your office oh, as being a okay. place that okay. it's okay if I left something behind there. That's right, fine. Right. I'm not, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. You don't need to send me all these alerts over and over and over again. Okay. But in order for that to work, okay. you would really have to have some way – because unlike your home or your office, which are like physical GPS locations that don't change, right. your car uh, does. Yeah. And so Zach said you know, maybe Apple could create a way that if you get like an additional – air tag that you leave in your car all the time like the devices should know that if they're close to your car's air tag that's a safe place not <laughs> that's okay morning. right um <laughs> i just thought it was clever and anyone out there that has used find my has i'm sure gotten these alerts yeah. every time i drive away them. and you right. don't want you don't want the alerts to become so annoying that you ignore them because then when it really does matter you know yeah, much like cry you know, wolf the, right exactly cry wolf sky is falling whatever whatever analogy you want to use <laughs> you, you want to pay attention to it when it does matter so i just thought it was a very clever article yeah, I'm in danger of that. Every time I drive away, you know, I don't bring my AirPods with me every time. And sure enough, every time I start driving away, which is cool and I see it, but it's almost like, okay, I got it. Like I need, and I try to say, you know, trust trust this this location, that kind of a thing. But yeah, I think some things need to be refined a little bit more on that yeah. for sure. Interesting stuff. The beginning of your post today was lovely talking about Apple TV Plus and some of the shows that we that we have been talking about uh, and I'll just tell you quickly you had recommended Spirited which we had not seen but I think it was like on the Christmas Eve maybe or the, or Eve Eve uh, Jeff we sat down the whole family we absolutely loved it it Wasn't was so show. much so that my daughter has been listening to the soundtrack like over and over and over <laughs> in apple music because she's singing along to uh whatever the, the ripple song whatever that is yeah, she's like yeah, singing yeah, along yeah, ripple yeah. ripple ripple that was such a tongue-in-cheek fun movie a little bit of things for everybody across the board and so many little easter eggs like even the uh, the elf costume just look for that <laughs> so many neat things in there but you did a lot better of a, of a job going over a much broader area of all the Apple TV shows that some of them I hadn't even thought of over this past year, but just to continue to see this library grow that Apple t that Apple is creating with TV Plus. Yeah, I started to write about this because I saw that for people that don't currently subscribe to the service between now and January 3rd, so like while you have oh, yeah. time over the holidays, you can watch a whole bunch of shows for free. For most shows, it's like the first season. I think for Mythic Quest, it's the first and second season. But even oh, if you nice. don't pay, if you just open up the, 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 the TV app on your iPhone or your iPad or your Apple TV, just start watching and it'll, it'll yeah. even if you're not a subscriber, it'll let you watch some of these shows. So if for some reason, for example, you've been living under a rock, and you still haven't seen Ted Lasso yet. Now's the time to go ahead and watch it. Um, you know, I saw Pele pass so away you yesterday. Know. So, we, you know, right. soccer's on your mind right now. Yes, um, right. So, um, so check those right. things out. But what amazed me, Brett, and I didn't expect this until I sat down and started writing this, is I still think of Apple TV Plus as being this little niche service yeah. that only yeah. has a few shows. But right. then when I counted up just in Look calendar year 2022, Look at just that. the shows that I watched this year, I think I watched... I mean, there are other networks that I really like, like Netflix and, and HBO, right. um, but I don't know that I've watched quite as many shows, or at least it's been pretty close. I was totally surprised that I have watched so many shows, and, and not just yeah. watched, enjoyed yeah. so many shows yeah. on Apple TV Plus over the past year. Um, they, they are really building up a catalog. I mean, they, it, the, the, the service is not that old, but if you're like a brand new Apple TV Plus subscriber, there's a lot. You, there's a there's ton a lot. there. All the stuff that came out this year, all the stuff that came out last year, the original stuff that was there in the beginning, like For All Mankind yeah. and stuff like that. Right, um, right. It is, you know, this is not an easy thing to just say we're going to start a network with all of this original content. And I think we're far enough in that we can say, Thumbs up to Apple. I mean, the, the, my, yeah. my best, the best thing I can say is when I think of all the shows I watched this year, and I'd be curious if, if you've thought about this, Brett, like my favorite show of all of 2022 was Severance. I just love that show. My yeah. second favorite show was the most recent season of For All Mankind. Right. And probably my third right. favorite show was probably, probably Andor, which was on Disney Plus. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Star Wars show. Yeah. But um, right. but for two of my top three shows to be on this you know relatively new network, 
I, I surprised myself to even say that. Yeah, it's just it, it just incredible to see this. And again, because those of us that have kind of watched Apple in the past, I kind of still liken this back to like the music uh, component there, right? In the sense that they started in on music and it took them a long time, but they just kept rolling forward. And now they're like one of the biggest competitors in that. I mean, still way behind something like Spotify, mm -hmm. but that's okay. They're okay with that. It's like, it, there would be no Spotify, I believe, if there wasn't iTunes in the beginning and Apple, you know, pushing that forward. And it's just incredible to continue to see this. You know, we talked about, that Apple now even has soccer, you know, the professional soccer leagues in the United States, mm -hmm. at least, and maybe beyond. And, you know, we talked about, are they going to do NFL or not? And I think there's more politics like going on there, there than anything yeah, else. YouTube yeah, exactly. Happens, right? But it just, yeah, it is incredible to see, you know, and again, you know, it, we've been accused in the past of being Apple fanboys. And maybe it's just because it's Apple TV Plus. I don't know. But just your point that you just made, Jeff, it's like we wouldn't recommend these if they weren't actually really good shows, right? I yeah, mean, we get yeah. in there and and they really keep our attention and you hear about everybody talking about these so it's not just us these you also mentioned slow horses which my wife and i we just started the season two which so oh great. so yeah so so good on that yeah. all right the In last fact, thing slow quickly, horses, yeah go ahead the, the season yeah. finale might even be today so um with that one's uh, okay so. no spoilers okay so <laughs> the last thing quickly uh we've talked about the apple watch ultra many many times but you linked to a really fascinating video today from the verge which is always good anyway but th this i think even the editor at the very end of the video she's like wow i just looked at the timeline on this there is it's 23 minutes long but i gotta tell you it is so engrossing if you have any interest or you want to know about you know possibly uh diving into the apple watch i thought they did a very balanced uh version maybe even so much a little bit more to the negative side of it like you know this may not be the apple watch that that you want um but i just really like the fact that they w even went down as like the repairability component i thought they did a very good job on right, that right right they right. had somebody go through a from a fitness perspective, from a hiking perspective, you know, they really pointed out some of the, I don't know if it's flaws necessarily, but they pointed out some of the aspects that like, hey, you know, this, this may need a little bit more uh, mm -hmm. finesse uh, on this before it works. And then lastly, quickly, I liked one of the things they pointed out again, you and I've mentioned this, I love my Apple Watch Ultra, but I want Apple to take better advantage of the bigger screen. Like, I feel like there's just wasted space on that. And that to me should be an easy software fix, but they haven't done it yet. Yeah. So it's a great video. I mean, most YouTube videos, I, I found that after about a minute or so of attention, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. done with this video, move on to the next one. Done. And yeah. this is one of those videos that for me, at least, even though I don't even own an Apple Watch Ultra, I started watching it. And next thing you know, you know, almost a half hour has passed because I've just enjoyed, uh, you know, the video so well. So right. if you're right. at all curious of the Apple Watch Ultra, and certainly if you own one and you want to, you know, hear from some people that really know what they're talking about, uh, it was a great video. Very good. In the know, let's do a what we got for Christmas edition. And I will tell you, <laughs> here is one of my favorite gifts I think I have ever received from my lovely, lovely daughter, who only earns money from her babysitting <laughs> gigs that she has, Jeff. And she knew that her dad <laughs> was a, a coffee aficionado, a bordering on snob. I, I would even yeah. probably even so go far so, so far as to say I'm a snob. So she knows that I complain about the fact that after a few minutes of pouring your nice hot mug of coffee, it starts to cool off quickly. Right. Now, I have seen the Ember mug around for several years. And in fact, I've now even gotten into the story of who developed it. It was an independent inventor that developed it after he had the same issue. And he wanted to say, there's got to be a better way to do this. Now, there are many mugs out there that are insulated mugs. There are mugs out there that are designed, you know, to hold the heat in. But this Ember mug, E-M-B-E-R, is designed with a heating element inside it uh, but that's not all <laughs> there's like an accelerometer in there there's a battery inside it so that you can take it with you and it keeps track of the temperature of your beverage it can be tea i mean i just do it for coffee in here there's an app that goes along with this jeff <laughs> that you can track uh, the temperature of your liquid in the Ember mug. And in fact, I even have set presets in here so that I can say, I want it to be 138 degrees, which is typically what it comes with out of the box. And you can say, I'm going to pour in my, my liquid and I want it to be kept at 138 degrees for as long as I have liquid in the mug because it has a sensor in the mug. 
<laughs> that determines if it even has liquid in the mug. If you want it to go hotter or cooler, you can just open the app on your iPhone and you can track that. One of the other things quickly that they added recently was that it will now share information with the health kit app, with the health app on your iPhone <laughs> so that you it can track your caffeine intake for the day, as long as it's coffee, obviously. And if, if it's tea, then you can do a different preset on there, and you can just tie that with your health app. I mean, all of this is just so mind-blowing and so cool. I've learned about this and knew about this mug for so long, but – it was always the one of the ultimate splurges, right? It's $130 retail for a 10 ounce mug. That sounds absolutely ridiculous because probably it is, but it's like, I, you know, I, I'm okay. Like I'm making it okay. I've got a Zojirushi, <laughs> I've got other insulated mugs, but Jeff, I gotta tell you, I cannot have coffee in the morning now without this thing. It tells me when it's hot. It tells me when it needs to be recharged. There's a little coaster that comes with it. And so you can pretty much use the coaster indefinitely. I find that the battery life, when you're not using the coaster, the battery life will keep it hot because it's a lot of power to keep all of this hot for a while. It will maybe go for maybe an hour if you're lucky. And then you got to go back to the coaster on there. But it's just such a lovely, lovely little device. I know we've got Christmas already passed, but I just want to thank my daughter for, for, for giving me one of the, my favorite gifts I think that I have, uh, I have ever received on there. You can even customize the color of the little light on the bottom of the <laughs> mug as well. But that is, that is my favorite gift that I received received this past Christmas, the Ember Mug 2 or squared, whatever. So what they basically did for the second version is they just increased the battery life a little bit more, which is still lacking, right? I mean, it's a small mug because they got to have room for the actual <laughs> coffee <laughs> liquid in there. But it's just, this is my first foray into the smart, <laughs> smart mug <laughs> category. <laughs> and I love it. I'm sold for sure. I love your enthusiasm for describing this <laughs> present. Um, but just to go back from where you started, Brett, <laughs> yes, if sir. you use an iPhone app connected uh -huh. to your mug, <laughs> to yes. connected to you to keep a precise temperature of your beverage. Uh huh. Yes, you are a coffee snob. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be the exactly. Sign I know. Of being I, I, I think I'm starting to accept that, and I'm starting to embrace that. I I sure. agree, but. But you know what? I, I, at this point, I'm like, okay, I, that's where I am because I love it. I, here's the great thing about it. It's showing it on the screen right now. When I first opened it, Jeff, I had to update the firmware on the mug. Sure, yeah. Mo most, of the, app. most of the, the plates and silverware and cups in my kitchen, you need to install the software update before you can use the, the glass. Of course. I that had to do a sense. firmware update, but it was so <laughs> lovely. What, here's the only thing I would say, Ember, please use the live activity on my iPhone 14 oh, so that I can see real-time updates on there. But the, the app is. is actually very cool. I just, I love the fact that I can get in there. All the help and support is available in there because now I'm like, I'm, I, I'm like 18 levels deep in YouTube. YouTube videos on using the ember mug now but i gotta tell you i'm gonna buy another coaster because i need one for downstairs and i need one ah, for up in my of office course, of course <laughs> Ugh, i'm all I in man it. that was I my in the know for the day <laughs> that's great that's great so what you got for christmas is a mug that you love um what yes? i got for christmas along with a lot of good things was one bad thing which was some networking woes and so let me just describe oh what no so okay we went okay. up to my mother-in-law's house for christmas she lives in new york and we took with us um our apple tv so that I could plug in. We have two Apple TVs yeah, in the house. Yeah. We have my new one, which is connected to my main television. And then we have an older one that's, I don't even know how many years old it is. Um, and I have it connected to the TV in my bedroom that we very we don't use it very often. But it's nice to take that with you. You and I have talked about this in past episodes yes. that taking an Apple, an Apple TV uh -huh. with you when you travel is great. It. Because you can right. plug it into any TV, and then it makes it so easy to like show off photos with loved ones on the big TV, or you could watch you know TV shows like that Spirited show that you watch. You know you can uh -huh. watch. You know we were using it to just you know use the the music app on the television to have Christmas songs with the lyrics on screen and stuff like that. Right. So it's nice to have an Apple TV with you. But one of the things that I noticed when I was away from home is. Often, you know, always when I'm away from home, I can look at the home app on my iPhone to see that which lights are on, what lights are off, to access my security cameras, you know, all that sort of stuff. And it works when I'm away from home all the time, except that when I was in New York, I noticed that it wasn't working. And I'm like, what is going on here? And mm. it took me forever to figure it out. But ultimately, I, 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 as much as I love technology, I despise networking troubleshooting because I never 
understand it completely. There's always like right. voodoo involved and stuff like right. that. So <laughs> to jump to the end, it took me literally days. I didn't even figure this one out until I was back home again. But what I figured out is when you um when you're in your home, the home app works great. But when you're away from your home, in order oh. to access it remotely, you need to have a hub in your home. And yes. there's a number of different things that can be a hub. An Apple yes. TV can be a hub. A HomePod or a HomePod Mini can be a hub. Right. Um, right. And you can even use an older iPad that you have. As long as you keep it plugged in at your house all the time, it can right. be a hub. But it needs to be the bridge that connects the devices inside of your house with the outside world to communicate right. back and forth so that you could turn a light on or off or you could look at your security camera when you're away from home. That's home. That's using HomeKit. And if you, this was the tip that I figured out that if you're in the home app and if you want to find out what your hub is, you need to go open up the home app, tap the icon at the top right, which is a circle with three dots. And then you'll okay. see something called home settings, go into home settings, and then you'll scroll down and you'll see something that says home hubs and bridges tap on that and it will list all of the devices that potentially could be the hub like all of your apple tvs all of your uh, all of your home pods ah, and, HomePod minis. Okay. Um, and when i looked at that i realized that every single one of the devices in my house on my house was listed as being in standby mode and the way that it's supposed to work is you're supposed to have one device that says connected that's the one that's being used as a hub and then okay. your other devices are in standby and somehow at my house even though I have this very new Apple TV that's connected to like gigabit Ethernet, and you would think that would be the one that would be my home hub, the right. one that I left at home, for whatever reason, the Apple TV upstairs in my bedroom, the old one, that's the one that Apple decided to, de who knows why, it, it, it declared <laughs> itself the hub of my house. And so when I left it, and then I brought it to New York and plugged it up in New York, the hub was like, great, I'm plugged in again. I don't see any security cameras around me. I don't see any lights here. You know, it was it was thinking that my mother-in-law's house was my house with just no home cubic devices. Oh, so I could no. oh, it was such a pain. So this oh, was a no. failure on Apple. What should have happened is as soon as I unplugged the upstairs Apple TV, the downstairs one should have kicked in. It should have switched from yeah, standby right, mode right, into connected right. mode and says, I'm going to take over as the hub. Or, or maybe right. one of my home pods should have taken over as the hub, but it didn't happen. And so if that hmm. happens, once if you disconnect your hub, um, first of all, try to be aware of what your hub is, if you, just in case a problem like this ever <laughs> right. occurs. And then if you disconnect the device that is your hub, um, and you know that there's another one that you want it to become the hub, unplug it. It should happen automatically, but if it doesn't, unplug it, wait, you know, a couple seconds, plug it back in again. And then when my, when my Apple, when my, when my newer Apple TV rebooted, it suddenly looked around and said, Hey, nobody else is the hub here. I'm going to declare myself the hub okay. and everything worked. But of course I couldn't do that until I was back home because I couldn't unplug it from away. So I should have never had to do it in the first place. Right. I, I solved it. But the point is if, this whole world of like that there's multiple possible hubs and you can't manually designate which one is the hub, but you yeah, can that's... see what has appointed itself to be the hub. I didn't know any of this stuff until I had to research this networking problem. And so now that, now that I know what's going on, great. If the next time I take an Apple TV, I'll be conscious enough to make sure, okay, now right. I'm going to put this one. Let me make sure someone else has taken over that hub responsibility. Um, it turned huh. out we could still see our security cameras, by the way, because even though the home app was a disaster for me when I was right. at home, um, we use Eufy cameras that have their own app. That have um, the own app, you know, right, many. Right. So I was able to use, so that's why like, I knew that my house didn't like disappear from the map. You know, it's like, you know, we did have that big freeze going on over Christmas. I was afraid the, right. whole, the whole, whole of New Orleans froze or something. <laughs> no, the house was fine. The cameras were working fine. It's just, I couldn't use the home app, home kit to access. Interesting. That, so. I, I, I still say? feel like there's several things that have to get ironed out here. I, mm -hmm. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm j I just started researching some of this as well because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a couple of years behind you on the home automation aspect. But now that we have an app that can pre-start our car, my wife wants to like pre-start and warm up the car before we leave, but it's in the garage. So I thought, of course, you know, being the expert that I am, I'm like, well, there's a simple solution. We'll just get a smart garage door opener so that you can open the garage from inside the house before you start the car in the garage <laughs> so i'm like how do i do that do i need a hub so i'm glad you're pointing this out because i know this is something i'm going to be uh, wanting to look into but uh you mentioned quickly I, I i just know one thing that i was running up against because all of this is changing and in flux right now with the matter accessories matter, and the right, thread right, right. and all that's coming like having the home pod or the <clears throat> newest apple tv i think they're not going to allow you to use an ipad as a hub in in a very short order oh, yeah i think it says right here me. i haven't 
Yeah. Yeah. Look at that's that. I didn't the even upgrade know that. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, and yeah. I think that's only because it's the thread and the matter. Some of the things that we've been talking about for a while. I just know again, you know, just to kind of underscore the point that a lot of this is in flux and it still is a little bit confusing for anybody that wants to kind of just jump into it. But hey, that's what we're here for, right? We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll help you along on some of that. <laughs> All right. Good to talk with you again, Jeff. Hey, and um, just to remind everybody, we got something special planned for next week. I can't uh, wait. We'll just leave it. We'll just leave it as a teaser there. But but uh, but be sure and tune in next week because we got something special planned for everybody uh, in the uh, first uh, uh, session of the new year, which I'm very excited. Hard to believe. For, Hard to believe. Yeah, yeah, I know. Crazy, crazy. We'll talk to you next year, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Thanks, Brett. Bye, bye, everybody.